dear siblings in Christ. My name is Julie Grindle. I am the assistant to the Bishop for Candidacy and Mobility in the Upstate New York Synod. Um, I'm so glad to be here today uh, on this Vigil of Pentecost, May 30th, 2020. Um, I'm simultaneously uh, finding it very hard to be here with you today. Uh, for all of us, this has been a hard week, right? And as I thought about what I wanted to do today and what hymn I wanted to bring to you today, um, I was, of course, thinking about um, all of the events of this past week, of our siblings in Christ um, who have um, just been treated so terribly um, uh, to the point of having lost life uh, in this time, not just in the last week, although we will say their names, uh, George and Ahmad, uh, over the last month, and, and all of the other names. Uh, but I've been thinking about justice and about the spirit here um, on this eve of Pentecost. And so I've brought a hymn that is not in our hymnal. It's in the new Presbyterian hymnal, um, Glory to God, and it's called Spirit, Open My Heart. And the text uh, is in the comments. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful hymn. Um, and I would encourage you to take a look at it, uh, at this text that is posted there. Um, the beauty of this particular hymn is that it's very repetitive melodically. Um, so it's easy to pick up. And the added beauty of this hymn is its text because um, it is not uh, an inward looking uh, Pentecost and spirit text, but an outward looking text. Um, it doesn't just say spirit come into me um, and fill me with the spirit, but instead it's an outward looking text by Ruth Duck, who is one of our uh, wonderful hymn writers in this day and age. And in fact, I wanted to read you a little bit from the hymnal companion to Glory to God about this hymn. And then I want to talk a little bit more uh, about my struggles um, this week uh, and around this hymn that I'm sharing today. Uh, but first, uh, from hymnal companion to Glory to God um, about Ruth's hymn, it says, Many hymns directed to the Holy Spirit are inward directed and focused on the singer's private spirituality, often to the exclusion of others. By contrast, this text, emerging, emerging from the author's own spiritual journey and a discipline of writing a new hymn each Sunday whenever possible, prays for openness to human need, not only in our own lives, but also in the lives of those around us. So if you look at the first stanza, after the refrain, where it says, God, replace my stony heart with a heart that's kind and tender. All my coldness and fear to your grace, I now surrender. Um, she says that that opens with an image of the heart as the organ of feeling. And then the second stanza, um, the heart is presented as the seat of memory and intention. Write your love upon my heart as my law, my goal, my story, in each thought, word, and deed, may my living bring you glory. The reason this has been a tough week for me personally is because I have found hate inside of me that I don't think I knew existed. Um, I have had hate for the systems of injustice for a long time. But I have found hate in me for people this week. And so I needed this hymn to center me back in the reality of what the Spirit's intention is for us, which is justice and renewal and love, even through that hate. And so before I bring this hymn to you, since I can't, you know, sing it while I'm crying, I would also bring a piece of poetry, again, from this Crossings book, which I've used before. And this poem is called Wind and Fire. And Susan Sherwin is another one of our hymn writers. And Susan, um, her church and her husband's church, David Sherwin, you may know that name, 
is actually quite close to where the riots are happening in Minneapolis. And I, Susan's a good enough friend of mine that I think if I um, sort of take this poem into some pieces, she's not going to mind it. And if I um, do a few um, of my own edits to it, she won't mind. But I want you to consider this poem in the light of what is happening in cities all across our country, um, thinking on how the spirit is working in this time, how the spirit uh, is working within each and every one of us, but also how the spirit will then move outside of us. And so the first part of this poem, which is not written in parts, but I'm going to say it in parts, um, the poem is called Wind and Fire. And she says, wind and fire, so I want you to think about what's happening in our cities now. Picture whipping fire, the roar and the flame. Picture gathering together and a sound of a great wind rushing upon us, drowning our songs, silencing our prayers. The rush of a mighty wind, the power of the spirit. And that's the first part of the poem. Again, she didn't put this poem into sections. I'm putting this into sections, right? She wrote this as a poem for Pentecost, uh, certainly not having what's going on in our country in mind as she wrote it. And so now I invite you into the second section of this poem as we consider uh, our reality and as we get ready to sing this hymn, Spirit Open My Heart. She goes on to say, perhaps, before we pray, come Holy Spirit. Perhaps before we pray, set us on fire. Perhaps we should trembling bow the head and pray, strength, Lord. Courage, Lord. Endurance, Lord. Trust, Lord. And I personally would, would add justice, Lord. And then at last, as the roaring rises about us, pray, come. And so I ask you now to sing with me. You likely don't know this hymn, but as I said earlier, the beauty of it is as I sing it, it's the same music over and over again. Hopefully you'll be able to pick it up. And my lovely husband is in the other room. He's going to post a link um, to an assembly singing this hymn from Plymouth, Nebraska, uh, with my friend Tom Trenny um, leading it on the organ, that throughout the day, if you want to go back and sing it with an assembly, um, you are welcome to do that. That is also a life-giving thing for me right now, not being able to be in a, a church to be able to sing with others, uh, but I offer it to you today. I offer it as a prayer for myself, especially, um, and I hope that you are able to, to dwell in this time and find what you need in these difficult days, and I pray that the Spirit's blessings on you um, on this vigil of Pentecost, um, and I say, come Holy Spirit.
Thank you.